Hey guys, um, this is officially my first YouTube footage, um, which is going to be predominantly for inline goalies going forward. Um, today I've had a few requests to go through a good toe tie method or something that's successful for me and maybe might be for you, so I'm not too sure how it's going to come out, but hopefully it looks okay. So let's go through it. Um, hopefully, um, sorry everything's a bit of a mess at the moment. Let me get this thing working. So. To demonstrate, um, this is um, what I would consider to be the best inline hockey skate setup that exists at the moment. So, what I've done, it works for me because I have feet like a duck basically. I have the biggest, flattest feet you could ever imagine. Um, and so, I took um, the new uh, Mission Axiom skate. I hated the skate, um, but I love the Reebok like. 10k skate, uh, and I've pretty much dropped that into um, into my Axiom cowling, and the chassis really works for me. It's a really great setup. I love the pump, um, and it's the double E, which is great for wide feet. In fact, it's the only skate I've found for wide feet. Um, anyone that knows me knows about my pads. Uh, I have pretty crazy, massive yellow pads. Um, Smiths now have been been bought by Warrior Hockey, um, so pretty much. You can still get this pad, but you're going to pay a massive premium for it. Um, I've experimented with um, with toe ties for a long time. In fact, I didn't use in fact I didn't use any kind of toe tie for for a long time. Um, it was only around five years ago um, that uh, I was kind of playing ice, and then I realised that toe ties are just so, you know, you get so much more control over your pad, um, you know, when you move your toe, yeah, you don't have it too tight, but just have that extra control, just means recovery from things like butterfly, etc. You, your feet feel, your, your skates um, feel like they're controlling your pad motion, etc. So, uh, I feel like you get a lot more control. I would, I would suggest that when, if you find a toe tie method that works, that it will work for you as a goalie, as opposed to not work. Um, I don't know how I don't know how some guys don't do it. Okay, so here's my method. So this is called the one tie method. So as you can see, I have just the one lace coming from my coming from my pad. Um, I took off the sliding toe bridge, uh, and I have just one lace. It's coming like I mean, you could do whatever, right? I mean, this is a, this is a bit of a mess, but I've kind of got mine snaking up the pad, etc. But however you have it, just have like the one the one lace coming from. Now it can come. From, the, but really, the closer it is to the inside of your pad, the better. Like this one's kind of broken a little bit, and I'm going to sew that up. So at the moment, for demonstration purposes and for my eyes, I kind of haven't it come through this middle hole. But whatever pad you've got, you're going to have some kind of hole where you can have one one lace coming from it. Um, doesn't matter how long it is, because you can do whatever you want with the extra. But it doesn't need to be too long. Okay. So here's my chassis. Here's my cowling. So as you can see, there's not much of a gap uh, between the front wheel. And here, you know, there's not much anything. Anything that's playing in here, I've always had issues with. Yeah, I can't get it to work. So here's my here's the first the first hole in the chassis. Um, you can't see any wheel interference, which is great. And then you've got you've got like whatever back here, but we're not even really going to use that. So this is just what's important. So any kind the predator has that. Um, as does this. Any goalie chassis worth its money will be fine. So, right, what do I do? First thing you notice that I have a free eyelet here. I know some people kind of mock people that kind of do do you know leave the front eyelet but it also helps because I've got super wide feet and it's not too tight down here see I've got these really loose okay so lace comes through this is my left leg left leg lace goes through the chassis pops out the other side okay so all fine now what I'm doing here is I'm just talking it yeah so I'm just making sure it's well actually let's do this first let's do this first so now the lace comes through the one spare, you're only going to use the left hand side eyelet on your left foot, so the outside eyelet. So the, let me, oh, this lace is a bit old. Uh, hang on, let me put this down so you can, one sec. So I'm coming through the eyelet. So at this point, really nice and easy. At this point, I want to have an amount of slack, right? So, let me see, what am I going to... I kind of want about... What is that? I kind of want from... from fingertip to around knuckle kind of length. You can experiment with this. 
approximate slack. Um, it might be a little bit more, or a little bit less for you. Um, so I want, I, that's how much I find works for me. Once I've got that, then I'm just going to wrap this around and tie this off somewhere. Uh, I need to put down the camera. Okay, now, you're probably thinking that this looked all way too simple, okay, like, and that's not going to work. So you can see my, my skate is attached here, right? Alright, now, so when the pad comes up, so, the pad's on, uh, I'll just do one of these buckles up. So you can see that the lace the lace now comes from the front of the skate and then comes through just through the first cowling. So now what's gonna happen is if you butterfly, the pad is gonna rotate to the outside. But obviously when you're obviously when you're butterfly, um, you're not your skate your wheels are gonna be moving. So it looks like there's some wheel interference here, but you're gonna have to trust me and try for yourself that that isn't gonna impact you, because then as soon as you get up and your pad returns then you've got no wheel interference, like this, this this, doesn't happen and the tighter you do this, as you can see if that gets really tight then it's nowhere near the wheel, okay, and I can I can tell you from playing at every level and playing, you know, like every day um, that, that there's no issues for me with this setup, all you need to do is because of the format of the toe bridge that you have um, and dependent on like the skate and the chassis combination you have just you need to, you need to kind of um, play around with this length of string so that so or this length of lace that works for you yeah but I'm I'm confident that there's a few things right firstly there's no wear issues here right the lace rarely needs replacing so the lace rarely needs replacing because um, it is not it's not rubbing on any sharp surfaces apart from potentially this here could be quite sharp but um but there's not really any sharp surfaces um, it won't rub on the ground. There's no way for it to rub on the ground. I know some people when they if they go to the two lace strategy and come up both sides, then on the inside, um, if you had a lace coming up here, if you had lace coming up here around here, then obviously this is a high wear area. So you've got no wear issues. So you're not going to have it bust on you halfway through a game, um, and and just it still allows good rotation. Or I obviously haven't um, tightened up my pads, so it's pretty it's rotating a lot here. But um, I'll, I'm going to put in some footage on, int on the internet, which is me playing, and then you can see that I never have any skating issues, and that you know skating's a big part of my game. So, so yeah, that's 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 the toe, that's the one foot toe tie method. Um, I, I've done this; it would actually be a little bit tighter than this in reality for me. So it would be a little bit tighter um, if I was really doing it. So just play around with that length. And uh, any more questions? Let me know. Okay, cheers. Uh,